Hello and welcome to a brand new episode. This week's guest is quite simply the definition of a cool guy. I'm talking about the founder of Team Brit, Dave Player. We caught up recently to chat about what made him want to start Team Brit in the first place, the hopes for the team in the future, the drivers and so much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi Dave, thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Uh, great, nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for um, showing such an interest in Team Brit. No worries, my pleasure. Um, so before we get into the whole Team Brit thing, can I ask you about the exact nature of your injury and how this has impacted your life in this way? Yeah, um, I spent five years in the British Army and I left after I left um i was still a little bit a little bit crazy and um i had too much to drink and i dived into a, a lake after a long boozy lunch and uh broke my neck so i was t- 24 at the time and i had to just decide very quickly um i needed to get a group get get a grip myself mentally and and uh and re- find a way to rebuild my life and reshape my life. Um, just, yeah, have to accept, the sooner you accept that you have new limitations um, and then build your life within those, with, 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 with what you can do. Mm. A good example is, is that you can't fly. <laughs> no. I, lost right? I can't chicken. walk. Yeah. So, you don't get all down and depressed because you can't fly and like, you know, so I, I can't walk anymore. So I'm in a wheelchair and I just have to accept, you know, getting down and depressed about it doesn't change it. You know? No, 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 no. Um, it just makes your life harder, pisses off your friends and uh, upsets your family. Apart from that, it's all fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then how did that whole experience turn into wanting to help injured troops? And then how did that turn into you thinking of Team Brit? From being injured at, at 24, I, I got involved in different uh, uh, businesses and uh, all was related to tourism and, and sport. So I'd set up warm weather training camps because uh, I used to live in the Algarve in Portugal. Hmm. I just set up warm weather training camps and wheelchair basketball tournaments and invite teams from all over Europe and the world to come. And then in 2002, I set up um, an international karting event. And I, I found a Dutch guy that um, was making hand controls for, for, for carts, but they're cable operated. Hmm. Um, so we, we had about 50 guys from all over the world come, America, Israel, Italy, Finland, um, and we held this cart race, and it was, it was a really, really interesting, real eye opener. Then in 2009, during the sort of the peak of the Afghan war, when all the young, young soldiers come back with missing limbs and stuff like that, I wanted to see if I could work with injured, injured veterans and, and see if I could pass on some of the, the things I've, I've, I've learned along my life about being independent. You know, so I'd come up with sayings like you, you can decide whether to get into the driver's seat of your life and take your life where you want it or you can be a passenger in your life and then complain when your life doesn't go away so those sorts of things help you understand that you know you can you can be in control of your life yes mm-hmm. you know these guys have got now, now new lives they're broke, broken bodies and stuff but they they had to learn to rebuild their lives their body and their um, and their broken bodies and, 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 and create a new life for themselves. You're saying about the, the hand controls then. Um, you saw that one from the, the Dutch guy that brought them along then. Did you then tinker with the designs yourself or how did they evolve into what is used now? The, no, I didn't tinker with what he had. They were, they were cable operated um, and they, they're really stiff to use. So you needed to have two very, very strong hands 
because the drivers will come back with uh, not very numb fingers and stuff mm. like that. So it, it, it really didn't provide um, disabled drivers with a, a, the technology they needed to, to race on a level playing field. So my first, my first aim was we had to come up with something that was low tech, low cost, uh, and suitable for as many different uh, disabilities as possible. Um, and that was easy and quick to install and remove from a cart. Because a cart track can't just have a, um, a set of hand controls fitted to a cart. The cart sat there, and maybe used a few times a month. Hmm. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a business. All the carts working. Um, so that's where, where together. That's shortly after that, I met Al, who's now our race engineer. He was working on a cart track, and uh, I think still doing his motorsport engineering um, education. And on a, on a steering wheel, you need. If you add paddles to a steering wheel on a cart, cart steering is heavy. Mm -hmm. So if you've got missing, we had lads with missing fingers when they got blown up. So quite a few of them had missing fingers. Um, so if you add a steering wheel to a cart, um, sorry, paddles to a, to a steering wheel on a cart, working the paddles and steering isn't very easy. Um, so to lighten the steering, if you use a handlebar setup, mm. you, you can steer with one hand. And then if you had a 45 degree boss, that lightens the steering even more. And it brings the steering more, more up and down like that rather than way towards you. Hmm. Um, and then it was just a cable, a cable op operated throttle, which fitted along with a cable operated th throttle on the cart. And then, then it was a hydraulic brake master cylinder from a super bike. We started off with a, with a now they cost about 400 quid, um, which is the expensive part. Mm. The um, started off the brakes, a brake from a Vespa. Um, they, they, they only got a small bore, so by the time you, you, you use that a few times, it just blows oh, yeah. the old seals. So you, you need a the larger the bore on, on a super bike, it breaks on a cart with two fingers. Um, yeah, so the, that, that, was, that was the design. So, um it's, I think it's the only set of hand controls that have been approved by the Motorsport Association. Um, I say it sounds really straightforward when you say it like this, but obviously if no one's looking at it, then they're not thinking about it, but it sounds just like a really neat way of getting around that whole problem and the benefits are, are, are huge. Yeah, especially if you're, if you're in a 24-hour race mm. and there's four to six drivers in the team and everyone's got a slightly different disability or even not disabled, you need to be able to get in and out of the car at the same speed as an able bodied driver. So, you know, if he seconds a lap, if his lap is a, is a minute, hmm. and you're parked up, getting all comfy, and you know, that doesn't work. You're a lap down now. I was so, say times everything in racing. You don't yeah, want to be so losing any more. comes in, double amputee jumps out, rolls over, it, makes, <laughs> it looks really messy. The guy, another guy jumps in, and off he goes. Uh, and um, so that's what we did. So we uh, we, we gave a, we gave a, the, the these young veterans a lot of confidence, self self confidence that you know they start to focus on what they can they can do, not what they can't. I can say it's part and, of the mental um, process, and like you were saying before, you show them there's this solution to help them do stuff more than it help build the confidence up a bit. Yeah, and the, the other really inter interesting thing was we had a, a clinical study done by the University of Nottingham uh, about the long term benefits of competitive motorsport on injured veterans, hmm. and the benefit the, the the benefits, benefits for those with physical injuries, amputees and stuff like that, were fairly obvious and pretty basic. But the really shocking or really interesting benefits were for those with mental health issues. Hmm. And what happened was, is that guys would, would come up with, and they'd be on all sorts of pills, uppers, downers, can't sleep, you know, all this sort of stuff. Hmm. And um, what karting does is, or any motorsport, is that to be competitive, you have to push yourself physically and mentally to the limit. And if you're not on that limit, you're not going fast enough. If, if you, if you, and you have to be right on that edge because once you go over the edge, you're crashing. Um, so living for these young veterans who are like adrenaline junkies, um, they 
they loved pushing themselves until they were physically drained and, and, and mentally drained. So we then, I'll give you an example. We, we, we entered a 12 hour race in mm -hmm. Milton Keynes, Daytona Milton Keynes, in the middle of summer. It was really, really hot. So in a 12 hour race, we entered four double amputees. Okay. Four above the, right? Four above the double amputees. And they said, can we enter two teams? So we can't. It, it's, it's, it's a really grueling race. You, you need three or four drivers. You know, it's too much for, for two of you in a 12 hour race. No, no, we want to do it. We want to do it. So that's what they loved. And when they finished, they would be so exhausted that they would sleep better than they've ever slept. Hmm. Um, Body's not thinking about anything else. Yeah, yeah, and, and they'd be thinking, they'd be buzzing about it for days, uh, and that's what the study came up with: is that if you, it's very simple, that it would give the lads something really positive to think about. It's like a kid mm -hmm. waiting for Christmas. Your know, motorsport is like a drug, drug for for, for, oh, for yeah. drivers. And so you hear drivers all the time saying how you can be addicted to it, and just it's got yeah. exact same properties. So why shouldn't it work in the same kind of way? Yeah, so. The nearer the, the nearer the event gets, the, the more excited, the more, the more they get, uh, like a kid waiting for Christmas, and the adrenaline is flowing, and they, they, they're no longer thinking about all the negative shit that was going through their minds. Eh? Hmm. You know, the, 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 when no you're depressed, you're down, you can't help it. You're, 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 thinking, you're looking down, you're thinking down, and you just can't escape all the blackness. Um, but when you've got something really positive to look forward to, that really lights your fire, that's all you can think about. Um, and, and you bore the crap out of your friends and family because all you talk <laughs> about is starting. Um, and you look at the, the, the YouTube videos of the racetrack and all this sort of stuff and you try to memorize stuff. Uh, so all that is really positive, has a really positive yeah, impact. You say it's, it's another way for them to focus the energy in, in, a, in a different direction so that yeah. there's no time to think about the other stuff and get bogged down. What the, what the professor did, called it was, it was, uh, it was an alt alternative form of, of rehab. <laughs> um, it was not to replace any, any form of re rehab, mm. it's not a miracle cure, but it's a, it's a, it's a something different. positive. Um, um, a, a, lot of, a lot of guys, would, would once the fires were, were relit inside them and they, they rediscovered their old selves, they would then start um, feeling good about themselves, they start losing weight. And so in, once in you've got that one side of your life sorted a little bit, so it's going well, then other bits will then naturally follow because you've got that confidence then. Exactly. And it rubs off in your personal life. Um, and you start to, you start, start to th think about your future, your, your career, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and um, you know, we had one guy come up, uh, emailed me and said, you know, when I was first started, I was on 30 pills a day. Um, and then and now it was within 10 months, he he'd got a job, uh, he got promoted, headhunted and promoted to become a site manager. And, uh, he, he's just got a mortgage and bought his first house. Right. So he says, it's all because of car force. I said, no, it's not, it's not me. It's you. He says, you have rediscovered yourself and, uh, carting is just reawoken you. So don't, mm. you know, don't, don't take. Don't take the credit away from yourself. You did this, you know. Uh, we just we just slapped you about and walked you off a bit. Sometimes that's what you need, though. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's fascinating stuff. Um, what's the process then that you use for finding drivers to join the team? We have Cart Force, which is our charity for karting. For, for team for Team Brit, then I'll ask that yeah. one. Yeah. So, so Team Brit, yeah. So Team Brit started in 2015, um, and we're not a charity, hmm. so we're, we're, we're a normal race team. So drivers have to cover their own costs. So what what an, an accurate way of describing it is we provide subsidized racing. So so the, the, uh, they don't have to pay for all the costs. We we we, we cover some of that, but they pro, they provide at least fifty percent hmm. of what you know they they normally pay in, a, in another team. They're coming to the to, to the um, to the race late, so that they haven't started as young kart kart racers and learned the art of of, of uh, sponsorship and, and building their profiles and stuff like that. So 
So they, all, they have to learn all that pretty quickly. So we, we have to help them teach them how to build a profile, how to keep their Facebook uh, stuff clean, uh, how to post nice, positive things and say nice things. And, and we've had some interesting, interesting challenges with people posting you know, controversial stuff on, on, on social media. Mm. Um, they have to earn their seat. Because mm. so one, one, one of the things is, even if we had all the money in the world, and you know, there's, there's every every guy thinks he's the best driver in the world. I, I get emails from people all the time. Um, I'm a disability, but I, I'm a, I, you know, just give me a chance. I'm the best driver. You know, you got to meet and blah blah blah. I said, listen, mate, you, you might well be, but if you can't do the other ninety percent of the work off track, mm. then you'll never get it get to be on track. So you you have to be prepared to to. Uh, to learn the art of sponsorship, and it's not. Uh, this is a, another thing we're trying to introduce is it's trying to normalise disability. Is that you know too many disabled people are conditioned or, or to think that they, they can get stuff charitably. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll crowdfund or I'll ask companies to donate some money. No, no, no. People do do not donate money. So another guy can go and have fun on a racetrack. It doesn't happen, no. even with the injured veterans. We, you know, you know, people do not donate money, so people can have fun on a race on a racetrack. Um, yeah, so it's, so it's um, a good way to challenge them then to see if they're serious about it, and then about earning their keep essentially. Then yeah, we're we're, keen, we're really keen to help anybody. We don't be part of Team Brett. Uh, we get contacted by people from all over the world. What do I need to do? So, uh, you know, what's your disability? What equipment do you need? This is what you need uh, to help you. Um, work out what sort of racing you want to do. Uh, what's your budget? Where are you going to get your money from? Do not use your own money to go racing. Because what happens is your money will run out. You won't learn, have learned the art of sponsorship and you'll be doubly pissed off because you can't race and you've got no money. So learn... You know, it's, it's hard. It's it's it's, it's mind-numbingly boring work sometimes trying to find sponsors, but it, 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 it's a business deal. And the more you do it, obviously, then the better you'll get at it, hopefully, and yeah. it's all good good learning curve. Anybody who thinks of just putting a, a, a logo on the on the car on the race suit, that's not how it works. Sadly, not. <laughs> I think we'd all be doing it if it was that easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so many companies who just want to see their logo on the car, yeah? <laughs> the way I explain it is that, like, a, a local butcher, is he going to, is he going to sp sponsor you so you can put your logo on his car? Will that help him sell sausages? No. Well, you may as well spend that money advertising in a local paper. Mm. So, so you've got to understand that what what are you going to help do to help bring business to that, to that sponsor? So it's... Um, all the drivers that we have, all six of them, have, have um, wanted to race that much that they've knuckled down and learned the art of sponsorship. And for those listening and watching who don't know or haven't been able to follow it so far, how is this season of racing going for Team Brit so far? It's the best race season we've had in our history. Every year it just seems to get better and better. Now, this year we've got three cars. We've got BMW one one. Eight. That's, that's the first step on the, on the, on the for, for rookies. And then we got a BMW M240i, 450 horsepower. And we built that from a, a crash damaged uh, hmm. car. I remember so, reading about that. Yeah. So lots of different companies uh, helped us out and uh, supplied us with different parts. That, and um, you know, they, they, they loved the idea. And so they co sponsored this the, the build of this car. Um, and then our, our top car is an Aston Martin V8 Vantage GD4. So we 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 have got three cars racing in brick car. The brick car's got two 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 championships: the endurance championship, which is raced on a Saturday. Now they've got classes one to four. Now our Aston Martin GD4 is in class four. So you can imagine the cars in class three, two, and one are pretty fast cars. Oh yeah. Uh, we are now P1 in class four and P3 overall 
and a 35 cars. Not too shabby, is it? Yeah, so that's pretty good. That's a round two with, a, uh, uh, with an autistic driver and a paraplegic. So that really that sends a really powerful message, you know? So pretty, pretty then, satisfying. Uh, it's just, you know, it's all the hard work that everybody puts in behind the scenes, you know, to allow these two guys to uh, to show off what we do, you know? Hmm. Uh, it just sends it's a really powerful message about um, about what we do, you know, normalizing disability and mm. racing on a level playing field um, and succeeding at it. Yeah, yeah. The way the way I, I, I describe it is that you know, once you once our drivers have got their helmets on, they get treated just as badly on the track as everybody else, and that's what the sport, that's what the sport's all about. And motorsport is the only sport that will allow disabled and able-bodied drivers to rate, a, 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 you know athletes, whatever, mm. to compete on a level playing field. I think apart from drafts or chess, there aren't any other sports in the world that, um, you know, with a bit of technology, um, can, can, can equal the playing field, you know? Mm. Not for sure. So then, um, brick car endure, a, tr- a brick car trophy is the lower class, uh, and they got th- three classes, one, two, and three, and they race on a Sunday. So that works out really handy for us. Um, and our BMW M240i is in class one, and the 118 is in class three. So we're doing okay. We're, we're, I think we're P5 and P4. So, yeah. That's pretty, pretty solid placing. Yeah. Pretty good. So, um, yeah. so then there have been, obviously, as you're just saying, some great moments for the team so far. Do you have a favourite? Yeah, I, I think it was probably one of the first moments. It was, uh, uh, I think it was our first race. And it was Bobby Trundley, our artistic driver, it was his first race in a car as well, hmm. in old racing carts. And it was the, the BMW 116 trophy. So it's hmm. a one make, one series, uh, about 30 cars, uh, 60 to 90 minute races. And um, Bobby won. His first race by like 15, 20 seconds. It was like Video. unbelievable. Um, and he, he came into the garage, he drove up to the garage and jumped out. And as the drivers do, cheering all the crew and everybody else, I, I thought, I have to go hide away somewhere because I'm getting a bit emotional. And I'm just hoping Bobby doesn't see me because if he's, I don't, I don't want to get emotional. So he sees me, comes <laughs> like sprinting over, gives me a big, massive hug and a, a just massive lump in my throat. And I'll just never forget it. It was just a, a real turning point for, for the team and the so hell, of to, to, hell of a way to start for him. And you won every race after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can see. Boy, that'd be such a that's that's great that. And then the last race we had, it was the same thing. It was just it was just Aaron, our paraplegic racer, started the race, it was race two, so one hour race. Hmm. And he spun out in the first lap on the on the, on the first lap, it was wet and um, Spun out, ended up last. And we also had a 15 second winner's time penalty because we came second in the last race. So we're last and a 15 second, second penalty. So we're like, oh, that's the end of the day for us. It'd be tricky. Yeah. Aaron fought back. Aaron drove the car back. He handed over the car in P10. Um, he just did a really massive, a really fantastic job. And then Bobby took it from P10 and on the last lap, Overtook and got P1 and won the race. And it was just oh, we got the as long as, you're first, as long as you're first when you go over the line at the end. That's all that matters. We got a fantastic video of Bobby on board camera. Bobby's like just cheering like crazy as he, as he crosses the finish line. He sees the the, the, the crew hanging mm. off the pit wall cheering, and um, it was just just really emotional. A hell of a drive that. It's, uh, because like you say, you just because uh, you, you, you're down in last with that kind of time penalty, you're just you'd have been happy with the P10 probably. <laughs> never mind yeah. the never mind the wins. So. <laughs> it's awesome. Um for those then again who, who don't know what are the aims for the future for Team Brit? Well a bit of a strange position because nobody else is doing this. So 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 we get contacted by all, all so it, we can't just be a normal race team of, of, and select our own disabled drivers because there's so many different disabled people who want to get a taste of the sport. So mm. we get inquired, inquired all the time. Uh, where, 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 can, where, can I do, where can I go karting? Where can I do this? So we 
we we we sign people sign post people where can where, where they can go to a cart track and and, and, and and enjoy some karting or the cart tracks some some like Daytona organize twenty four hour races twelve hour races mm. three hour races so you know you can get into some you know, reasonably competitive ra- uh, karting um, without having to buy a cart um, mm. and, and enjoy the thrills of motorsport at a pretty low cost. Um, but then we also got a, 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 there's no way where disabled people can go for a track day experience. So we, we, we bought a, a, a VW Polo GTI and it all oh, yeah. Mac and everything else was uh, 220 horsepower, so a punchy little, punchy little car, and and it's perfect for for track day experiences. Hmm. So we've now got a, a sim as well, uh, sponsored by the Sorrow. So they've they've, they've they they support us and, and, and let us have a sim, um, and and we've got a D box um, motion system. So it's a full motion system, oh, no. triple screen, and and the same hand controls that we've got in the car, we've got in the sim. So our, our clients, our guests, and our rookies, first of all, spend time on the sim, get to get to know how the hand controls work, get to know the layer of the track, and now, now, the, now the brain is tuned into how the hand controls mm. work. Um, then, they, then, then we let them out on track. Um, so it's a really neat way to progress them from one stage to the next, though. So they can crash as much as they like on the sim, <laughs> no damage. <laughs> on, on the sim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And also, we've, we've saved us a lot of money because uh, uh, we haven't had any major crashes since the sorrow of, 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 of supporters with us. And yeah. one of the key parts of the whole success of this whole whole project is uh, the hand controls. You know, um, as a disabled person, we, we, we drive our road cars, hmm. they're normally automatic cars. So you've got two pedals, accelerate and brake. <laughs> And the, the normal system is there's a few different varieties, but the, the normal system is is a system of called push pull hand controls that are bolted to the steering column. Push the lever, it pushes the brake pedal, you pull it, and it works the throttle. Hmm. So you've got one hand on the on the push pull working the throttle and brake, and you've got the other hand on the steering wheel steering. It's automatic, you don't need to change gear. Now, up until now, m- most disabled people have been racing with that system on track. Hmm. Well, you can't change gear. You can't race in automatic mode and be competitive. Um, so the, 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 the challenge that I gave our Al, our race engineer, you know, was that we need to be able to go through a chicane at the same speed as an able-bodied driver. So hmm. we, need be, we need to be able to brake, steer, shift down, off the brake, on the throttle, shift up, steer, all that at the same speed as an able driver. If we can't do that, then we'll never be competitive. Hmm. Um, so he came up with all different ideas until we came up with uh, the system we have now, which is a steering wheel with two paddles. The right-hand paddle is the throttle. The left-hand paddle, which is an engineering work of art that uh, Al's created, is the brake. Mm-hmm. And then the gear shifter is on the thumb. Gear up, you're down. Hmm. But we also can change gear with the, with the left thumb, so it and the pedals work as well. So if you've got one leg, one or the other, you can practice on the simulator which setup works best for you. Hmm. Yeah, you, might, you might decide that, that, yeah, you might decide that your, uh, your fastest lap comes just using hand controls, or if you've got one leg, we've got a new rookie who's got who's hemiplegic, so he's paralyzed on one side. Mm-hmm. So so he'll use the left foot to brake and his left hand to steer, uh, throttle, and change gear. Um, we got a driver with one, with one arm. So he uses both pedals as normal, steers, and changes gear with one arm. Now, if he had the other arm, he could change gear with that, change gear yeah. with that, his right thumb or his left thumb. So the, the, the system is so, so flexible. Because we, we we're we're a team endurance team, so when one driver jumps out, the other one jumps in. We don't need so, to change. Like you said before, you don't want to be wasting time moving too much around the place. So if you've got the system that can, it's how easy to adapt to it. It's, it's brilliant. Then to... designing a system for or coming up with a solution for one driver 
it's, it's only a challenge, but it's um, much easier because it's just for that one one driver. Like Zanardi, mm. he has a, he has a knee. Mm. So so is Billy Munger. You, they, they they have a the the one leg is above Abiti, one leg is below Abiti, below knee. So they have a knee, which is very useful. Have a knee when you're driving because you you can, with, with a uh, I think Zanardi just has a not a normal prosthetic leg, but a prosthetic leg you use it for braking. Uh, the ball at the end and that works the brake pedal. Mm. So he brakes with his knee and, and uh, throttles easy. Changing gears is easy as well. But you know, with our system, it's um, it has to be suitable for as many different drivers with a different distance possible, so we can race uh, on a level playing field. No, it's it's a genius kind of bit of technology, though. It's just again. Like you're saying, you start off with trying to sort out one solution for one driver, and then as a result of that, look where it's got to now. It's just it's staggering. Um, the, the other benefit that came from it was that the same setup on the steering wheel is is perfect for sim racing. So we're, we're now we're now set up e team Brett, but also helping guide disabled people on how they can. Um, be competitive with on, on sim racing um, with, with hand controls. Mm. Um, so it opens up a whole new. It's a market uh, for disabled people to uh, to enjoy, uh, you know, sim racing and being competitive on a, on a level playing field. And so it's like you say, there was no one really looking into this kind of thing beforehand. So it's just a matter of seeing how far you can can take it, and it just seems it just keeps going and going, which is brilliant. Um, is is Le Mans still the, the target for some some time down the line? Yeah, that's that. You know, when we set off, I, I said we need to have a. a, a we set ourselves on goals and, and and let's set ourselves a really hard challenge. You know, it might take us years and years, and and mm. and, and, and yes, the aim of of um, being the first all disabled race team to to compete in Le Mans uh, is a huge, huge challenge. But every year we get closer and closer. Now, we're, we're under no illusions. We're not just saying this. I've had meetings with the ACO. Um, you know, we're, we're not, there's a, there's a French team that's, that, that's, that's um, entering a team this year, but they've, got, they've only got two disabled drivers. And they've got a garage 56 entry. Garage 56 is a non-competitive entry. So, so you, want, you want the full deal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we want to earn our place on the grid. Mm. We don't want to be given a oh, charitable, no. uh, you know, that sort of, sort of defeats the object of what we're trying to do. We're trying exactly. to show that our drivers, even though they're disabled, compete on a level playing field. So we don't want any special treatment, no favours. There's no, um, you know, there's no no special rules for us, oh. no special cup. Um, and, and that's the whole idea is as, as society is progressing, you know, this is what it's all about. Is we have to earn our respect, and this is how you do it. You don't talk about it. You, know, you walk the walk. So we <laughs> we want to earn our place on the grid, and 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 compete, not just take part. Oh yeah, that's, no. that's our aim. Um, and that's very important to us. It's, you know, it's, it, and that, but that makes it even harder. We make it more satisfying because, uh, when when it happens, though. I think. But it also sends a much more powerful message. You know, people start mm. taking it a lot more seriously. You know. I was going to, like you say, if you've got, you're there not just to, to fill up the grid or be an uncompetitive thing, you're there to race and be competitive properly and it will show everyone then that, oh no, we're not just here for the sake of it, we're here because we earned our spot. And yeah. that's just so much, it's so much better than because, I mean, it's it's for anyone else out there who's thinking of doing something similar, you've got this one team then that makes it into arguably the most famous race in the world. It's like, well, nothing, yeah. nothing to stop you from doing it then. Well, that's the sort of message you want to give to young young disabled people or newly disabled people is that you know you can achieve greatness. You can you have to push yourself. It's not going to be handed to you in a plate. Mm. You're not going to get a garage 56 entry in your life. You know if you, if you want to if you want to if you want to achieve you can, but you but you have to make it happen. It's not going to be handed to you. No. you know, so it's not handed to anybody. Every, anybody who makes it to the to to the pinnacles of Motorsport like 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 Le Mans, they haven't just you know money hasn't 
made it happen for them. And so you need, even so, money can only take you so far to an extent. You still need yeah, yeah. the talent at the end of the day and the, the yeah. dedication to it. So, yeah, and that's that's a really powerful, a really important message to to send to, to you know to, to the next generation. Yeah? So we, where are we? So we are now. We've just announced that we're stepping up to British British GT, uh, mm-hmm. and that's what we'll be competing next year. So, Aaron. And Bobby, that are now racing our ass in that moment, will be competing in British GT. That's the pinnacle of GT racing in That's Britain. That's quite exciting. Yeah. So that now places us one step away from being el- el- eligible to apply for an entry at Le Mans. So if you know, if 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 all the stars align and we get the good results, and we impress the the, uh, the ACO. We get good. Um, they want to see that we got a good following. I mean, media st- stories and stuff like that. Documentaries are, uh, are in the pipeline. Um, all that adds weight to our appeal as a way to earn our place on the grid. You know, we don't want to be a moving roadblock. We want to be sure that we, you know, we don't crash every time we race. Um, that, that doesn't send the right message either. Um, so. Both our drivers now have got FIA silver graded race licenses, so we're we're ticking more and more boxes. So you're getting closer every day. Yeah. So, um, you know, is it optimistic or overly optimistic that we we might make it in twenty 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 three? It's possible. You can't rule it out. No, so the way that, the way we're, we're moving forwards and. Uh, you know, we just need some forward-thinking um, companies, and and this is this is uh, that believe in our, our crazy success story and want to jump on the bandwagon and sh- and share it and make it happen with us. You know, we mm. can do it on our own. We, we need to do it together. Um, and with 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 these big global movements that are happening now, like the Valuable Five Hundred, Five Hundred um, CEOs from global companies have come together. To create uh, this, this this organization called the Valuable 500, it's all about focusing on on, on, on uh, promoting disability uh, in the workplace and, and highlighting you know how many disabled people are actually working and uh, the value that they bring to the workforce. So hmm. these are all all uh, positive indicators that, that, that will help us make make that journey. And so you've been building on that that momentum over the last few years. You're saying every year. Is- so far has been uh, better than the last one. And then with this stuff going on outside of the water racing ground combined with it, they're all going in the right direction. So it, uh, <laughs> fingers crossed that I'm not drinking yeah. anything, but uh, it, it's all going in the right direction, which is just yeah. awesome to see. Yeah, but it's, it, we're, it's building blocks. And, and every year, that every time we achieve something, uh, you know, we, 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 we take, it's, the way I explain it to our drivers as well is that, we're building our profile. We're building our reputation because people don't believe that we can do it. Mm. The the doubters queuing up, you know, like the long, long queue of doubters that whatever. You know, every time I mention Le Mans, oh, we're full, we're full to be even thinking, about, even talking about that. But um, but you've got to aim high, you know. And um, so, so it's like having bricks when you build a wall, just mm. brick. And every time something good happens, you build your reputation. Your wall gets bigger and bigger and stronger, but very quickly, very easily. A wind will come and knock it over. So you need to need to get the bricks done properly each one, otherwise it's uh, yeah. it's just not going to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So we, that, that's what we're doing. We're we're building our building our, our profile, building our team, building our reputation on on not by talking the talk, but by walking the walk. You know? So we we we, uh, we deliver. On, we make promises and we deliver. Definitely so far, I mean, especially this season with the, with the uh, results. Yeah, you know, there's so many interesting disabled people out there. Um, there's one one guy injured in the, uh, the Isle of Man, um, yeah. TT, um, Steve Mercer. He, he had a really bad crash. Uh, he, he wants to get back into motorsport. And uh, this is what we provide them, the, the platform. Not a nice, cuddly little charity where they can have some fun. You know, this is a guy who's used to you know, racing. Mm. Superbike endurance racer who's used to push himself in competing in the Isle of Man. So 
he wants to get back on, back so on the it horse. Would, it wouldn't be satisfying for him if he was just going to going around on a little cart or something, just having having a nice yeah. nice time. He wants to be there at the at the front of the thick of it on the, on the edge. I think <laughs> these are sort of guys that we we uh, you know the, the world is full of these people. You know, um, and motorsport can offer that second lease of life. You know, um, for, for for many people. Are there um, any unwritten rules at Team Brit that you kind of got like little inside jokes um, in the, in the team? As we started off as a team of uh, um, injured soldiers, it's, uh, it's everything's everything's a dark humour. Nothing's off the table, uh, and, uh, and I thought that's one way of setting the tone as well. For you know, we we we, we take the piss out of each other's disabilities, uh, but that's that's the whole thing about it. And, it, and it, that's that's where it's refreshing. There's no... Um, you know how to be delicate or wrap anyone in cotton stuff. wood. In cotton wood, yeah, 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 you yeah. just... People with that bug, you know, that mm. crazy bug that you're born with, and you just always want to win. And, um, you know, something like that, and others, others like collecting stamps. It's not right <laughs> or wrong, it's just, it's just the way it is, isn't it? Yep, yeah. that's very true. Um, switching tack slightly, a couple of uh, different, more fun questions for, to, to wrap things up for them. Um, if animals could talk, which would be the rudest in your opinion? That'd be a hyena, wouldn't it? Yeah, dirty, dirty. That's bugs, true. A Scottish hyena. Don't get many of them. Yeah. Finally then, what's the most ridiculous fact that you know? The most ridiculous fact I know is... It's just a recent one. In fact, it kind of shocked me that I have been on this planet twice as long as it was from the end of the Second World War to when I was born. That's got to be weird to wrap your head around, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, so you know, I was born in 67 and I'm 53. And I, I always thought, I wish that people stopped going about the Second World War, even though <laughs> I love the history and stuff like that. But it was only 22 years, 22 years, 23 years, 22. I was born 22 years after the Second World War. Uh, and I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't like, quite compute in the head. It, always, it just seems yeah. longer, even though the math makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's very yeah. that's yeah. random fact indeed. Perfect. Um, I want to thank you for very much for, for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to, uh, chatting to you. Um, wish Team Brit the best of luck with the rest of the season, and I'm hoping... Fingers crossed. See you at Le Mans very soon. Yeah. And anybody with a disability anywhere in the world who's interested or, or even sim centres that want, want to welcome car centres anywhere in the world that want to welcome disabled people, drop me an email. You know, we, we've helped people, companies all over the world. It's free. We, we share the information and all we want to do is help. So my, my email address is info at teambrit. Co.uk. I shall stick it in the in the uh, description and everything. Make sure it's all sorted. It's a it's a brilliant team, and I can't believe that no one else has uh, thought of it before you did, or giving it a go. <laughs>